All right, y'all, so today I'm going to be teaching you how to do a super basic uh, beginner level procedural tile generation in Godot 4 in a 2D game. Specifically, we'll be making use of the pattern system that was added in Godot 4, and we will be using these patterns on a grid. So this procedural generation is specifically for building on a grid. If you're looking for something like creating complex landscapes and stuff like that using noise or something like that, this tutorial is not for you. This is for people who are looking to put objects in a grid space. Very simple, very basic, and it's a good way to get your first step into procedural generation. So you can see here that I've got the scene set up already. I've got a world scene with just a plain black backdrop, just a black mesh instance, and a camera. So I can play the scene, and you'll see it appear here. So we're gonna start by adding a tile map node and get a new tile set in here. So this tile set is basically going to be what is placed on the tile map. So a tile map is like a grid that you can paint on. Um, and then the tile set is what you paint with. This is like your paint, right? So I'm gonna click on this tile set here once I have it created and expand that. I'm gonna set my tile size to eight pixels, but you can use whatever the size of your art is. Um, I'm just using these super stupid, simple eight by eight PNGs of solid colors. Sorry, so you come down here to tile set which will allow you to manage the tiles that you have, like that paint, like I said, this is like what your source is. So I'm gonna put all of these in here as sources. And I'm just gonna say yes. This will allow you to automatically create tiles in this atlas. Now, if you didn't do that, if you didn't say yes, if you wanted to do it manually, I'll just show you how to do that real quick. You'll drag it in there, you'll say no, you'll select the one that you wanna create a tile for, and then you'll just click inside of this. So now I've got all of these created. And so basically I could start painting with this if I wanted to. So I'd come down here to tile map to, and so, and that's the difference, right? You gotta keep these straight. Tile set is for managing your resources. Tile map is for actually painting, okay? So you come down here to tile map, select the color that you wanna paint with. So maybe I'll just use this green color here. And uh, once you have your color selected or the, the tile that you wanna paint with selected, you have to come over here and select the tile that you're using as well. This is how it is for these single tiles. This, they do this because if, say, my g.png here were a big atlas that had a bunch of different tiles on there, it let you pick those smaller ones, but I've only got one per PNG. So that's why you have to do this. But you have to select the tile over here and then the tool that you're going to use. So I'm going to use the pencil, and now I can just draw just like that. Like I said, we're going to be utilizing the pattern system, which was implemented in Godot 4. So you can access that on both the tile set and the tile map. What we're going to do is we're going to create something and then we're going to save it as a pattern so it can be referenced later. So let's just start by doing that. For the sake of this demonstration, maybe I'll just do some numbers. Okay, so now that we have these images drawn, right, we're going to manage our patterns. So you can access that by switching between this tile to patterns here. You're gonna make sure you have the select tool active. What we're gonna do is we're going to select the tiles that we wanna save as a pattern. So whatever you select, this is going to be what can be randomly generated, right? So I'm going to do that, and then I'm just going to grab this and pull it in here, just like that. There's no visual indication that, that that's doing anything, and, uh, you know, this is still kind of as in, early, in its early stages, so that's not, that's just not polished, right? But you just drag it in, boom, just like that. You can also copy and paste them if you want, but I prefer to drag it in because I just had some issues with the clipboard when I started copy-pasting. So just like that, we've got our four different patterns created. Now these will be what are randomly generated on the grid that we're going to use. You can see that each of these have an index value. So one is index zero. I guess I could have made that a little less confusing, but um, starts at zero, moves up through one, right? Okay, so now we have these saved. We can actually just erase all of these tiles here just so we can have a blank canvas to work on. Save that up. Um, and then we're going to add a script to this tile map. All right, I'm just gonna really call the script generator because this is our random generator. All right, so we've got our extends tile map up here, right? We're utilizing the code that comes with a tile map. We're gonna need to define a few variables to get started. So the first one we're going to do is grid size, which is going to be equal to however we want, however large we want our grid to be. Then we're gonna do placer position. When I say placer, what I'm referring to is where the current pattern is being placed on the grid. So this is going to be a vector 2i. Now vector 2i is different from vector 2, which you might be familiar with. Uh, I don't fully know how they work, but you can read the documentation on it. Basically, it's a precise way of referencing coordinates on a grid, okay? So this vector 2i, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to negative 
grid size, comma, negative grid size. Now what that's doing is basically saying that when we place our first pattern, it's going to be at position negative 160, negative 160. Our next variable is going to be space, which is equal to how much, how much space we want in between each pattern. Something else about this uh, space variable right here, you want to make sure that this goes into this, right? 40 goes into 160, 4 goes into 16, 4 by 4 is 16. You want to make sure that goes into it. Otherwise, you're going to add space and then you're going to miss tiles, right? If I say I did, uh, I don't know, if I did 30 into 100, right, I would go place, skip 30, place, skip 30, now we're at 60, place, skip 30, now we're at 90. So nothing's going to land on that last tile unless it goes into 100, right? So in this case, 40 goes into 160 four times. We're going to add an active variable, which is just saying that we actually want this thing to run. So you can stop it at any point in time. And we're going to stop it once it's done to prevent any sort of like memory leakage or something. If something were to go wrong, we just don't want the script to be running all the time. And then we're just going to create an empty variable called patterns which is going to ultimately reference the number of patterns that we have in the tile set. Okay, so we have four patterns, right? Zero through three, index zero through three, numbers one through four. So you could just set this equal to four if you want to, because that's how many there are, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to first create a function, a ready function. So at the start of it, it's going to set the value of patterns equal to tile set dot get pattern count. Okay, so that's going to automatically pull whatever the number of patterns you have saved is and reference that for patterns. So you can just keep on adding them as it goes and the script won't break. It'll just create an, it'll just throw one of those new patterns into the cycle for procedural generation. All right, and the rest of this is going to be done inside of a process delta. So it happens every tick. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is check to see if we're active and then we'll start randomizing things. So if active is equal to true, that's where we're going to begin. And we're going to start by using the randomize function, which will basically make sure every time this cycles, it'll have a new random seed. And we're going to call a new variable inside of this function, right? So variable pattern is what we're going to call it, is equal to tile set dot get pattern random range, randi, so R-A-N-D-I, that's random integer range, zero comma patterns. And I'll show you something else that we can do with this in a little bit. What this is doing is we're taking the, we're creating a variable pattern and setting it equal to the tile sets pattern. Now the pattern ID, the index is what this is referencing, right? This index number here, we've got index three, two, one, zero. It will be a random integer from zero to patterns minus one. Patterns being four, because that's the count of the total number of patterns that we have here. So four minus one, that's three between zero and three. So right now, this will every time we every t every tick, this is going to select one of these at random. That's what we've done so far. Now to get the actual placement of the patterns on the grid, all right, we're going to say if placer position dot x is less than the grid size. So that placer, its x coordinate, which is this first one here, is less than the size of the grid, which is one sixty. So negative 160 is less than 160. So as long as we have not gone to the, the furthest boundary of our grid, this will run. We're gonna call the set pattern function zero. So you can see right here, right? This is kind of giving you the autofill or the, the guidelines here. So layer integer, this is the layer that you wanna place it on. So in my case, we're just gonna say zero. That's like the base layer. Position, this is the coordinates where it's going to be. Right? So for that, we're going to use our placer position. And our last one is the pattern that we're referencing, which is going to be pattern, which we just called in that line right here, right? So we've got this randomly selected pattern. Assuming this, these conditions are met, we're going to set that randomly selected pattern where the placer is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say placer underscore position our placer position dot x plus equals space. So that means once we have placed down that pattern, 
we're going to jump the designated amount of space, right? So that we can ensure that we have space in between them. Otherwise they would just, if, say if we did plus one, it would just, every single spot would have a, um, have something placed on it. It would just get super convoluted. So this makes sure that we have space. This works if you're doing like a city or something, you wanna have roads in between, you need to have space in between your patterns, okay? And so that's all for that little section there. Now, our next line, if placer position x is equal to grid size and placer position y is less than grid size. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. So the x position of our placer is, this is under the condition that, that this x value has now hit 160. It has hit our grid size, okay? So we have moved in one direction all the way to the end of that grid. And the y coordinate is also less than the grid size. So on one axis, the x axis, we have moved all the way across the grid. But we have not done it on both axes yet. We have not fully filled out this square grid. In the event that this occurs, our placer position y is going to increase by space. So we, we're all the way at the end, we're at the boundary, now we're gonna jump up on the y. So now we're gonna move to the next y row, okay? And we're going to reset the x position back to negative grid size. So we're going all the way back to that corner that we started in. So now we moved up a line and we're going, we're going to run back down our lines again. And that's, that's like, that's the core of this here. Okay. This, this works as it is. So we're just going to do one more thing. We're going to say if placer position is equal to vector two I grid size comma grid size active equals false. Okay. So, so what that's saying is if, if our placer has reached 160, 160, the maximum bound of our grid, so it's filled out every spot that we have selected on that grid, we're gonna turn off, it's just gonna stop. So this won't keep running anymore, it won't keep randomizing, it won't keep trying to do this. It'll be better for performance and it will hopefully prevent any issues. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the script, guys. This, this works, like this, this will run as it is. So let's just give it a test. And you can see these appeared on the grid. So let me, let me zoom out the camera a little bit here. Uh, so we can actually see what's going on. Boom, random grid, right? So that that's exactly what it works. Say if your if your two pattern was a building, your three pattern was a building, your one pattern was a building. You had all these different ones. You'd have them in a different pattern. And if you pay attention, right, we got two, three, 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 one. Let's run it again. One, three, three, one, three, one, one, one. It's different every time. And that randomized variable really helps us out. Or this randomized function. Something that you can do that I like to employ sometimes is to add a space right? Sometimes maybe you just want nothing on a tile. So you can just go into your random range here, change the zero to negative one, because there is no negative one, it doesn't exist. And now we've got gaps, right? Random chance of there being a space in it. And that works just like that. That's it. That's all it takes, right? So with this, you are able to do some super entry level random generation in Godot. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. If there's a way that you know to do this better, let me know. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Let me know if this worked for you and if you were able to make something with it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, until next time.